the, the changes we need don't just have to do with the Republicans. Now, the problem we have is not just one person or one party. We've got to change how Washington works, because lost, Washington has lost touch with you, the American people. It isn't hearing your voices. And if we're going to really change how business is done in Washington, there are two things at least we've got to change. Number one, we've got to end the dominance of special interests in Washington. That's why at the beginning of this campaign I said I would not take PAC money. I would not take money from federal lobbyists. They have not funded my campaign. They will not run our White House, and they will not drown out the voices of the American people when I'm President of the United States of America. I, I don't want the drug companies and the insurance companies writing our health care bills. I want those bills to be written to make sure that you are getting a fair deal in health care. I don't want the oil companies writing our energy legislation. I want to do what's good for our national interests, not the special interests. So we've got to break the dominance of special interests in Washington. The second thing we've got to do, though, is we've got to be honest with the American people about how we're going to solve some of these problems. You, some of you heard the debate I was having with John McCain. He wanted to institute a gas tax holiday to solve the gas problem. Now, this gas tax holiday for three months was going to amount to 30 cents a day for 90 days for a grand total of $28 in savings. But that's only assuming that the oil companies actually lowered gas prices when we took away the tax. How many people actually think the oil companies would lower gas prices? They would have pocketed that money in a, in a hot minute. Not only that, it would have taken money out of the Highway Trust Fund that's used to rebuild our roads and our bridges and put people back to work. And so I said, this is a gimmick. This is designed to get a politician through the next election, not to solve a problem. And we've been talking about energy for decades now, through Democratic and Republican administrations, at, at least since the 70s. And it is time we started doing something about it. Now, people need real relief right now. So what I've said is not a $28 savings. I've said, let's give a tax break to the middle class for all the, difficult, the difficulties that they're having paying their bills. I want to provide a $1,000 middle class tax cut to working families, $1,000 that they can spend to offset higher gas prices, but also higher food prices and also higher medical costs. And we're going to pay for it by closing those tax loopholes and tax breaks that are going to corporations that don't need them and shouldn't have gotten them in the first place. So we are going to pay for these tax cuts. But if we're serious about ending our energy crisis, then there are only a few ways we've got to do it. And that is to, we've got to increase the use of alternative fuels, and we've got to raise fuel efficiency standards on cars. We've got to make sure that we are investing in solar and wind and biodiesel, and we can put millions of people to work right here in South Dakota by having a real energy policy. It is time we made that happen right here and right now, and we will do it when I'm President of the United States of America.